In this episode, we get to hear about Mike Chin. And one thing you gotta know about Mike Chin, actually two things you gotta know about Mike Chin, is that he is a tinkerer and he is helpful by nature. Both of those go together to help make him what amounts to a support god, quite frankly. Um, I'm gonna let you guys get to it and I'll talk to you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the man that answers all of your questions, the one, the only Mike Chin. How you doing, Mike? Good, how are you doing? You know, I'm good. And I, I just, I want to know if you feel the same way, but I find that Mike's tend to be good looking, smart, the best. generally well-spoken. Hands down. Yeah, handsome. hands down. Yeah. The best I people mean, in the world. Um, you got Mike Weeds. He's cool. Mike Weeds. Yeah, he's another yeah. one. Um, who are some other sorry, mics on my list? Uh, I'm trying to think of some other mics now. Now I have to alt tab to <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> um, now, now there's gonna be a mic who's like super mad. He's like super mad. I know. We just yeah. we immediately we have immediately pissed off half of the mics in the FPV industry. Um. Anyways, man. Uh, Mike Virgin. Oh, dude, I like Mike Virgin you too. Can't, you some, can't like, leave out Mike Virgin. Yeah, that dude. That I mean, dude the, got... the long range videos that he posts, like some of my favorites, to be honest. Dude, his I've eyes... told him that too. Even when he, even when him and I get testy with each other sometimes, because we do. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, hey man, I still like your videos. Like... <laughs> <laughs> he he has some epic videos. Like he every time I watch one of his videos, I I slowly find myself thinking maybe I could build a wing, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Every time I long range, it's like my heart just starts racing about well, the long range. You guys are going to laugh at me, but about a mile out, my heart's like, oh, crap. How am I going to get back? Where am I? Like, yeah. I don't know how he does because he takes it pretty far out. Dude, he goes out for miles. Yeah. I don't it's run not... GPS either, which probably it should. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, now I will say this in the terrain that Mike Virgin is in, if he ran out and like crashed it into one of those mountains, he's not getting it back. No, it's not. And back. there's, a, there's like, there's another guy that I watch like his long range videos that don't really get that many views. I can't even. I think it's like Vasily or something. He's a TBS pilot. Mm -hmm. But they, they're like my favorite things to watch is the long range videos. Like I've seen a park a thousand times. And I can watch you dive a building like a hundred times too. But right, some of those places like you've never, probably never had people walk over them. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's very true. Um, we'll put, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll have to put links in the description so that people can go find them. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to link. There's a, I'll send you a link to a video from that. I think is I'm going to butchering his name, yeah. but, uh, he has this free animal video that like I've showed like all my friends and it's got like, you know, 2000 views on it. You know, That's awesome. It's not like one of those like 30,000 view, like, yeah. And I think it's my favorite FPV video of the last year. And it's just, you know. For some reason, he doesn't Wait, get the views. What's his? You know what? I think somebody tried let, to put me, me in touch with this guy. Pull it up. Pull let it me, up. Yeah. Because let me see. I, I think I just typed in. Uh, I'll never find it now. Oh no! I found it right off the first first. What's map. his name? All right. I'm gonna spell it to you. Okay. V a s i l i. So I think that's Vasily. Okay. But I'm probably butchering that. And then. Zerman, I want to say. I'm just going to copy okay. paste it to you right now. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I don't. Apparently, I don't know how to send a message while we're talking. Nah, don't worry. Uh, about it. We'll get it after the. We'll get it after the show. There, there it is. All right, I see it. Yeah, I see it. <clears throat> um, so we'll link all those in the description. But let's let's talk about Mike Chin, about the most amazing of Mikes. Well, second most amazing. <laughs> um, so. You tell me what you do, because that's really what we're here to talk about. So I do customer support for Tiny Whoop originally, and then Team Black Sheep, and then as of a few weeks ago, uh, now Heli Nation. So I handle all of the inquiries of like, what should I buy to get started? Why doesn't my drone arm? Like, why doesn't my video work? Why is this stuck in bootload? Like all those questions I have to find the answer to. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of it, like, yeah, there's a lot that I like retain from seeing the question over and over again. But I mean, 
a lot of it is just being really good at Google, man. <laughs> like <laughs> being able to read a a, a freaking manual because most of the inf- the information is there. You just got to be able to like find it and then right. give it to somebody in a way that they can digest. Because I feel like that's a lot of the problem too. Because people get these thirty minute long videos that they don't really want to watch and they skip through it and they miss half the information they need when sometimes they just need the answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, it's like a, a lot a, of it is just finding the answer and being able to give it to them. A minute long video on YouTube is worthless. I don't know, man. I have a two minute. I have a bunch of two minute long tutorials oh, just you? to get the. Uh, yeah, I do because I when I look for something, how how do I want to do this? It's like okay, I and then I like find Josh's video and then I skip through <laughs> the beginning part of it and then I get to the part where he opens up Beta Flight and shows how to do it real quick and then I just go okay, cool. And like, sometimes I just want that 30 second thing. So a lot of like my quick tutorials are mainly for customers. So it's like yeah. when a customer asks me the same question a hundred times, like how do I auto bind a crossfire? That's yeah. when I go into the other room and just shoot like a minute and a half long video on how to do it. Just literally like in real time doing it. Mm-hmm. And I figure like, and it's not like something I do for like views or anything. It's literally to solve tickets. Right. It's one of those things like if they want to learn more, there's a th- like a million people now that will give you like a 30 minute long. Why is this, this, but some people just want the answer. You know what I mean? Some people just yeah. want that one minute. How do I get this thing in the air right now? Because I want to go out and it's nice outside. And, and really honestly, you know, I, so my background is in internet support. Um, so back in early, was it the late nineties? I worked in an ISP telling people how to get on a dial up. And it is like when you're on the other end of a support ticket, when you need help, a lot of times you just want that quick win. Like you just want yeah, the, I, every time. Here's, yeah. Here, I mean, honestly, like for, I get a lot of people who are kind of, at, by the time they get to me, they're usually pretty pissed off mm-hmm. for the most part. So it's like they, they've already feel like they've looked all over the internet for the answer and I haven't found it. So it's kind of my job to find the answer real quick. And mm-hmm. in a digestible way where they're not reading a thing this long on how to do it or watching a 40 minute video. So is it just you or is there a team that works with you? So with tiny whoop, um, there's Ben Hildreth who he does like the order section of tiny whoop, but sometimes he handles a little bit of support. So it's okay. kind of him and I as a little team there, uh, at team black sheep, we, I have Shang who is, okay. she's been there since what before I have, but, um, she is, she lives over in Hong Kong and I mm-hmm. like she, as much as she know, like she's, there's a lot of things that I go to her for where I'm like, Hey, how do I do like, what's going on here? But she doesn't, she's not really a pilot. You know what I mean? Okay. She's not in like the FPV scene. Yeah. And then, so there's a lot of those tickets that I have to take over over there. And then, uh, for Heli Nation, it's pretty much me. And then, uh, Patrick who owns, like, I'm newer here, so I'm still kind of getting into that. How do you handle this for mm-hmm. this company? Because there's each company kind of handles things differently across the entire industry. So yeah. like how they handle their warranty claims, how they handle their credits, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of lear- like learning that process for each company. Mm-hmm. And then, so I work with all those different people to just kind of like, and then Wayne at TBS too. He's like kind of like the manager over there, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, like I always, whenever it's like a situation where I'm kind of like, I think this is the answer, but I'm not really a hundred percent sure. That's when I usually go to Wayne and I'm like, Hey man, like what's your opinion on this? And he, him and I kind of just blast through some of the harder ones. Mm -hmm. And then there's at TBS. I also have like Remo and Chris where Remo and Chris are actually part owners of uh, Mm -hmm. team black sheep. And uh, Remo is the software engineer and Chris is the hardware engineer for team black sheep. So it's like, I'll get questions like, what is this specific capacitor on this thing here? And I'm right. like, hey, hey, Chris, what is that? And within seconds, somehow he knows like to the part number, like what it is. Yeah. And yeah. then Remo is the one where I'm like, hey, I don't know how this is happening on this thing. Like, what is it? And they're like, oh, just right. do this. Or yeah. I'll, I'll program in a fix tomorrow. And then it's like a live new update. So there's yeah. a lot of support that happens behind the scene that isn't the customer interaction. But I'm kind of the person, like especially at Team Black Sheep, where it's a lot more in depth because we're the manufacturer of those items versus like Heli Nation and Tiny Whoop are retailers that do mm-hmm. make stuff. 
um, that with like, there's stuff that happens behind the scene where I kind of have to just filter those to like, Remo doesn't need to know about a ticket of how to unlock and unify. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. when some guy using Ardu Pilot is noticing like whatever is not working at this point with this thing at this baud rate, mm-hmm. Remo's the guy who figures that out. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I can't retain all that. Like I, there's no way I can retain all that information. What's your What's your workflow look like? I mean, do you have like a a list of canned answers that you just send out for like fifty percent of the tickets? Or I I specifically try to stray against copy paste answers. Okay. Because I've been on the other side of a support ticket, and whenever I get a copy paste answer, I feel like that guy doesn't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, nothing against the people who use them. I just feel like it's more of a personal connection if you get a response back that's very exactly to what you asked the question. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, if you sent me, hey, man, this isn't working. I'm like, hey, Mike, like, let's look at what you got here and like figure this out. And then you realize that you're not talking to some... I mean, the last name kind of throws people off, but they think they're talking to somebody in China who you know, doesn't <laughs> care. But like, there's... I, I really try to like talk to those people like in a way like person to person. And the other thing is too is like when I you know I see people from Michigan all the time. I'm like go blue, and I just send them like a picture of, like Jim Harbor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like I I really try to stay away from those canned answers like as much as possible. Yeah, uh, and, and I will say that in in my times in in a support capacity, adding those little things like go blue or you know, the, the personal touches can turn, can turn the customer experience in 180 degrees. Um, and so I think that's a, that's a, that's a great touch. Yeah. I just, like I said, I've been on the other side when I'm trying to get something figured out and it really sucks when it feels like you're just talking to a robot Mm -hmm. and they don't really read your ticket and they don't really and they aren't really trying to figure out what what is going on. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'd, yeah. I'd rather offer that personalized experience and actually solve the problem. I have people send their stuff to me all the time to fix. Like, I have an oblivion coming right now from a customer mm-hmm. to, to like fix freaking phone always, You're all right. day. <laughs> so, speaking of the phone, what are your typical hours? I mean, that is a, a, an extremely tricky question because basically, if I'm awake, I'm answering somebody's question for the most part Mm -hmm. like and i Mm -hmm. because i enjoy it like i like figuring out like i like i like projects that don't have instructions Mm -hmm. like i was a kid like legos i like you know what i mean i just i like working through problems without i don't i probably like building more than i like flying just to figure out cool new things like when i first started playing with drones uh this was like only like four years ago which was like my first rc stuff I was like trying to figure out how to like remap motors using like weird stuff before motor like pin remapping was done and just and it wasn't because I needed to it was just because I was like I bet you could use that other pin to do motor four instead of motor five right and then you know what I mean like just weird stuff like that so you so at nature you're a tinkerer yeah pretty hard that's awesome I, I, I just like screwing with stuff before i got into drones i was playing with like arcade cabinets for like i helped some guy uh old guy move it like at his house and he's like do you want this arcade cabinet yeah (laughs) like and then i was playing with that and just (laughs) like and it didn't work but i like put an emulator and a raspberry pi in it and was like trying to use like it ran like shit but i got it working and then i actually sold that to buy my first drone that's awesome so let me um Let's talk about, I know that in my, in my time for support, I got some crazy questions. What is the craziest support question you've gotten? Uh, I don't even, nothing really seems that crazy in FPV anymore. Like it just, I can't really think of any, oh, I got, I have one. Uh, I had a guy, it, it was the U S government and they were building a trap. Uh, to catch golden eagles for to like put the tags on their legs so uh-huh. they could like monitor their movement and like against poachers and stuff like that so they had to figure out a way to fire off a trap from like a mile away because if they were too close to them they'd scare them off wow 
So we figured out like using a cappy servo with this pull mechanism and crossfire mm-hmm. and building a little box that like put the antenna up out of the ground and then they got it working. So now it like they fire a crossfire switch and it like That's awesome. It's crazy looking and I'm like that's that's actually one of the more proud ones I am of like projects wise because it was like that's pretty cool and it's for conservation. Yeah. No, that's very cool. That's very cool. Um, so let's say that here I am, my name's Mike Rollins. I've decided that this support, this support thing is what I want to get into. How does somebody get into what you do and how did you get into it? I, I get that question a lot and I think it's extremely hard to answer because there's a lot of factors at play. Mm -hmm. How I got into it was I was burying cable for Comcast. So I was working a manual labor job. Uh, this is after, like I had to like a a career in the music industry working Mm -hmm. for like signed bands and i got back and after a career in the music industry you realize there's you got to go back to manual labor or figure something out Mm -hmm. so i was bearing cable and when i was bearing cable between each job there was like 10 to 15 minutes where you travel to the next place Mm -hmm. and at that time it was like it's kind of funny because the like at that, I went back to Beer and Cable to make money so I could get into FPV because when I first got into it, I was working like a really crappy job mm-hmm. and like making zero money. So like when I wanted to get like everything for FPV, I couldn't afford it. So I started doing that, and then I went to Flight Fest uh, that year and met all like Steel and Stingy and those guys and Tommy and all those guys and started mm-hmm. playing with Tiny Whoops, and then I started Beer and Cable. The problem was is I'd work so late burying cable that by the time I got out, it was dark. So I'd go home and play with Tiny Whoops all day. Like that's all night be- between the times that I got home from work and then going to sleep, I'd just play with Tiny Whoops. Mm-hmm. That then led to like in between each job, I had that 10, 15 minutes, I'd sit on the Tiny Whoop page and some new guy would be like, how do I do this with a Tiny Whoop? And I'd answer their question real quick because mm-hmm. I had that 15 minute. Because it was all day, they kind of like noticed me on the page answering all these questions. And I got approached by one of the uh, old co-owners of tiny hoop and was like, do you want a job? Like, do you want to want to do this for us? And at first it was pretty low paying and, but I was working another job. It was just like, screw it. I like doing it anyway. I'm doing it. Might as well just do that. Mm-hmm. So that's how I actually got my job in FPV. It wasn't something that was like a career choice or like, I'm going to do this and this is how I'm going to make my living. It was like, I already do this because I like doing it. And now someone's offering me money to do it. Okay. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Um, so then I started doing that for a while and about a year later I was like, that's about the time I met Trappy. Um, mm-hmm. I was working flight fest for tiny whoop and he saw I, was, I worked for tiny whoop because I, I like. I really like to help people. So like when I go to those events, a lot of the time I spend at international open or flight fest or any of those events, I like to, you know, help people solve, they go crash their stuff and I help them fix it, figure out like Mm -hmm. what's going on. Uh, and after that he was like, Hey man, I, I might have a job for you. That kind of laid on the burner for a long time. Um, kept working for tiny whoop. And then about a year and a half ago, like not this past March, but the March before, uh, he was like, Hey man, I, I need some help on support. So we talked. And then at that time it allowed, I, there was no way I was going to be able to bury cable and do team black sheep at the same time because mm-hmm. it was just too much time. So I took that job and for a couple of days a week, I went, I found a job at a smoke shop near here. Mm-hmm. So I just worked the smoke shop, did tiny whoop and team black sheep when I got home because it was just like, honestly, it was like doing what I like to do anyway. But mm-hmm. now I get like an endless supply of like cool problems to solve. So like that's how I got into Team Black Sheep is just working a lot and doing like just solving people's stuff. And then from there, um, kept doing the same thing over and over. Met Patrick at International Open two years ago. Mm-hmm. He tried to offer me a job. Well, not really offered, but he was asking like, Hey, are you? Do you think you have some? Could have some time? And at that time, I, I was really overloaded because I was still getting used to Team Black Sheep and sure. how they their stuff. And uh, then recently, uh, John left Hellion Nation to pursue a new career. 
He had some other stuff he wanted to do. And Patrick was like, hey, man, like, I was thinking about talking to you last year, but you seemed really busy. Do you think you could handle it now? And now I do Heli Nation. So how does that, um, what's your, you know, how does that break down? Like, how do you, do you do equal time for each group? Are you on like a retainer kind of agreement? Like, how's the, how's the business aspect of that work out? So for Team Black Sheep, I'm on salary and okay, and full time. Uh, Heli Nation, same thing. Tiny Whoop is hourly, but I, the reason we do it that way with Tiny Whoop is Tiny Whoop is not a giant company, and like sure. I said, it's never been about for me about money or pursuing a dollar because I I live pretty modestly and I like it that way. I don't I'm not really chasing, you know, the crazy car, the crazy how like mm-hmm. I like I live I'm comfortable. So Tiny Whoop, um, there's times we're slow and stuff like that. Like during the summer, we pick up a lot during the winter. I've never wanted to charge Jesse crazy amounts of money for the you know simple amount of time that I do, mm-hmm. and that's kept it. And Tiny Whoop's a small business. We only have about five, four employees, four or five. Sure. So I just keep it that way, and it's always been that way, and then I'm happy with it. And I just do a couple hours a day where I pop in, make check the groups, make sure nothing crazy is going on. I'm always monitoring the Facebook, uh, you know, making sure there's not crazy, you know, off topic things, people being mm-hmm. like douchebags to each other. Like, and same thing with, with Helly nation and, and TBS. It's kind of a 24 hour job is monitoring those Facebook groups. And then with Helly nation, I work 10 to six every day, like Monday mm-hmm. through Friday. And that's with like phones on, like, because I answer our phone calls for Heli Nation. Okay. And during that time, I hit the tickets. So that ticket time usually isn't too bad. There's not, Heli Nation doesn't get a crazy amount of tickets mm-hmm. compared to Team Black Sheep. TBS, which is, yeah. Right, yeah. TBS is another, like a whole another animal. Once I'm done with that, I'm always, the phone's still on, but I'm on TBS. So TBS support is kind of like, it's pretty nuts. There's a lot of stuff coming in, a lot of different... Because as the manufacturer, when you buy your Unify from, say, Get FPV or Heli Nation, and you have an mm-hmm. issue with it, you, lots of times you don't contact Get FPV or Heli Nation. You go to the manufacturer. When it's a question that Get FPV or Heli Nation or Pure Flip can't answer, they send it to TBS. So it's versus a retail store, you get it in, and sometimes you you know you have to hit up the manufacturer. How do you want to deal with this? I'm that's like the catch all is TBS is I, I catch all of it. So, yeah. And there's, a... main, there's retailers all over the world too. So it, it's not just the United States, it's Europe, it's Russia, it's everywhere. So, I mean, when do you sleep? When do you fly? <laughs> I'm all right. So, so I, I sleep like three, four hours a night, most nights. Sometimes Are you I, serious? Like a, How is that sustainable, man? Well, I'm, I, dude. I used to tour. Like, I used to tour with a band. I'm used mm-hmm. to like. I've always been that way. Like, I sleep. Like, Wayne makes fun of me. He's like, I don't know how you exist because you never sleep. I'm always awake. Um, the other, like, I'm kind of a sleep camel. So sometimes on the weekends, I'll just like out for like 18 hours and wake up mm-hmm. and like my phone's like on fire from blowing up from so many people hitting it up, and then. I'm good for like three days, dude. I'll go like two, three hours a night. Uh, this past week, I kind of like took a Facebook break ish, which a Facebook break means I'm like basically only responding to like tags and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was, I needed it. It was one of those like, eh, I just need to take a break for a second. And I actually did like a weird schedule. It was like to avoid people where mm-hmm. <laughs> I like woke up at like 11 or 12 at night. And then worked TBS all through the night. And then at like 7, I like took a break for like two hours, you know, mm-hmm. get some food and whatnot. And then I was working 10 to 6 at night and then just like going to bed at 6. So I wow. wouldn't have to like, you know what I mean? Like, and just like sleeping through the main part of the day. So then like, yeah, I don't have to be, I don't see the like Facebook threads that make me mad and say something yeah. stupid or get myself in trouble. Do you know what I mean? Like I just did that for like a week. It also coincided with the release of world of Warcraft classic and uh, uh, that worked out well, you know, yeah, but yeah, uh, I think it was good. Like to just take a break for like a week. Cause it gets pretty crazy on, 
on Facebook and mm-hmm. the social medias. Yeah, the yeah the the I mean, God, I can't imagine having to live on Facebook. It, it yeah. How how much does that like eat at your soul? Quite a bit. Sometimes. I mean, I like all right. So because I like I said, I played World of Warcraft forever and with like sure. music stuff. I've always been a networker. Mm-hmm. Someone who talks to a lot of people. I also think that's probably another way that is like a key thing to getting into FPV, like working on in FPV, is you have to talk and have FaceTime with these people. You can't just like expect to just be on Facebook and get noticed. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like being at the event or the thing and meeting these people and having face to face time with them where they actually see you're a, a real person and not like a scumbag, I think does huge wonders compared to like the alternative where you, if you think you're just going to sit on Facebook and answer things all day and that's going to get you a job, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So how much of, you know, I, I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like there's multiple avenues here that, that led to your success so far, which is number one, you're just naturally helpful. You're a tinkerer as well. So you like to figure things out. But then you also went to Flight Fest. You went to IO. You go to all these. How many? Are there any other events that you go to? Yeah, I used I used to do uh, FPV Fest ready made. Okay. I couldn't do it this year because I just IO and Flight Fest this year wore me out. Yeah, it was because I camped out for both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I did Rampage, actually, uh, the Rotor Riot Rampage a couple of years back or about a year ago. Yeah, I went and helped out there. Um, I've actually helped with Quad Camp in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Just you know, it's it's about going to it's the community. You know what I mean? You have to yeah. be part of the community. You can't just fly by yourself in your yard and not meet people. I mean, you can if you want. If that's your goal and that's what you want to do. But if you want to, I guess, become well known and get a job, at, like with the people who are working in the industry, I think you need that FaceTime. Yeah, I think that. Um... It, you know, all of the just going to general jobs in general, um, a lot of the jobs that I've had have been because I've known somebody and it's not necessarily that it's Crafty, a good, but whatever. Yeah. Well, but, like, but, it, but it's, it's just how it, the world works. Well, it's not that, the, and it's not even that it's the good old boy system working, right? It's just that, you know, people think, oh, well, Hey, you know, who would I like to work with? And man, I, I'd like to work with that Mike guy, you know, you, when you're personable, Crazy. yeah. When you're personable and you're not a you're not a jerk, and at the same time you're useful to them, um, it it works out, and they know you personally. It works out very well. So yeah, I mean, I think face to face time is invaluable. Mm-hmm. I really do. Like you, you can meet someone online and think whatever of them, mm-hmm. good or bad. But when you meet someone in person, I feel like even a lot of the people who like you know want to be turds online, when you meet them in person, you realize like. Yep. They want to be nice, you know what I mean? They're they're cool people, and then I would say most of the people I meet after I've that, you know, because there's some people who don't like me, whatever. I I'll meet them in person, and they most of the time change their mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and it, what what I find and what I have found is that the minute you take the anonymity away, anonymity of the keyboard away, people change. They change right away because they're not as. I don't know. know. Cr- Cricket says I'm a troll in person and I'm a well, troll. I, I mean, all right. Yeah. So hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cr- Dude, no, I'm, no. I'm riding around with fucking Cricket and he's like, "Man, you the same in person as you are online. You just troll all the time." <laughs> like. Yeah, but but probably the difference though is that like you know when you when you troll online like and and you know you and I have had we've had a run in or two online. Um, it it's hard to tell whether you're just playing around or whether you're. I'm always playing around, dude. I, I don't take right. anything too seriously. I don't think you can. Like, right. I think that's a good way to get pissed off online. Yeah. Like, I'm the first to make fun of myself. Like, you know what right. I mean? Like, but I think if you're you cricket well, riding around with you in person, he probably. I mean, you know, you guys were. I don't know what you guys were doing. But I'm sure that it was we there were, was a good natured element to it. Actually, we were we had heard that the the fusion module was coming to IO, like the uh-huh. pre production ones. Okay. And so we were chasing, we were going to where the mail went, 
to try to convince Trappy to give us one. Because and be, but we had to get there before he did, so we could couldn't get him to his car and like hide him. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we were like racing off to the IO like mail building, and then like I'm just like talking. I'm like, you're not getting one cricket. Like this is this rides for me. Like, <laughs> like, and then we get there, and they weren't even there yet. So that's awesome, though. Having run support in the past uh, for an ISP and for various other organizations, I can tell you that Mike's outlook on support is unique. It is the fact that he strives to maintain the friendliness that he does with all the people that he talks to um, is a, a real redeeming factor in terms of how you handle support. Um, it's very easy when you're running support to get angry and upset and dehumanize the people that are sending you tickets. And it sounds like Mike fights against that as hard as he can. Uh, we are in Give Back October. This is Mike Chin and also Aaron Paul, if you watched the previous one. And, uh, you know, while Mike may not have, Mike does have a little bit of notoriety in the internet sphere, um, he's not what we would call FPV famous, right? Um, but Mike is, you can hear from that video, he works tirelessly to support so many people and it's truly awesome how many people he has probably helped on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I'd like to thank my patrons. Uh, my patrons, like I said, it, it have been awesome recently. Um, good feedback, good ideas. Um, if you are part of my pat Patreon, then you get things like a monthly update as to how the channel is doing. You get the option to put um, ideas on the plate, who I should interview, if there's, up if there's changes you think I should make, um, and you get to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. If you'd like to be a patron, you can check out the link in the description below. Next up, we talk about Mike and the TBS Fusion. And Mike's passion for the product actually shows through very, very heavily. Um, I think that you're going to enjoy it, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye.